I'd like to thank you now, but refer to two points made in the introduction given about me, and then I will be open for any questions. Last year, I would say two years ago, I raised two questions. You know that my main job is a university instructor. Right now, as president of Iran, I still continue teaching graduate and PhD level courses on a weekly basis. My students are working with me in scientific fields. I believe that I am an academic myself, so I speak with you from an academic point of view, and I raise two questions. Up. But instead of a response, I got a wave of insults and allegations against me. And regretfully, they came mostly from groups who claimed most to believe in the freedom of speech and the freedom of information. You know quite well that Palestine is an old wound, as old as 60 years. For 60 years, these people are displaced. For 60 years, these people are being killed. For 60 years, on a daily basis, there's conflict and terror. For 60 years, innocent women and children are destroyed and killed by helicopters and airplanes that break the house over their heads. For 60 years, children and kids kindergartens, in schools, in high schools, are in prison being tortured. For 60 years, security in the Middle East has been endangered. For 60 years, the slogan of, of expansionism from the Nile to the Euphrates is being chanted by certain groups in that part of the world. And as an academic, I ask two questions. The same two questions that I will ask here again. And you judge for yourselves whether the response to these questions should be the insults, the allegations, and all the words and the negative propaganda, or should we really try and face these two questions and respond to them? Like you, like any academic, I too will keep not get become silent until I get the answer. So I'm awaiting logical answers instead of insults. My first question was, if given that the Holocaust is a present reality of our time, a history that occurred, why is there not sufficient research that can approach the topic from different perspectives? Our friend referred to 1930 as, as the point of the departure for this development. However, I believe the Holocaust, from what we read, happens during World War II after 1930 in the 1940s. So, you know, we have to really be able to trace the event. My question was simple. There are researchers who want to approach the topic from a different perspective. Why are they put into prison? Right now, there are a number of European academics who have been sent to prison because they attempted to write about the Holocaust or research it from a different perspective, questioning certain aspects of it. My question is, why is it and open to all forms of research. I have been told that there's been enough research on the topic, and I ask, well, when it comes to topics such as freedom, topics such as democracy, concepts and norms such as God, religion, physics even, or chemistry, there's been a lot of research, but we still continue more research on those topics. We encourage it, but then why don't we encourage more research on a historical event that has become the root, the cause of many heavy catastrophes in the region in this time and age. Why shouldn't there be more research about the root causes? That was my first question. And my second question, well, given this historical event, if it is a reality, we need to still question whether the Palestinian people should be paying for it or not. After all, it happened in Europe. The Palestinian people had no role to play in it. So why is it that the Palestinian people are paying the price of an event they had nothing to do with? The Palestinian people didn't commit any crime. It, they had no role to play in World War II. They were living with the Jewish communities and the Christian communities in peace at the time. They didn't have any problems. 
And today, too, Jews, Christians, and Muslims live in brotherhood all over the world, in many parts of the world. They don't have any serious problems. But why is it that the Palestinians should pay a price, innocent Palestinians, for five million people to remain displaced or refugees abroad for 60 years? Or is this not a crime? Is we asking about these crimes a crime in and by itself? Why should an academic myself face insults when we're asking questions like this? Is this what you call freedom and upholding the freedom of thought? And as for the second topic, Iran's nuclear issue. I know there's time limits, but I need 